just driving north in the Volvo. It's the first time I've made a car video in this car. And I've got a different camera pointed a different direction. Never mind. Uh, but I'm thinking about Benatar again. Sorry, this is kind of related to Benatar antinatalism. So if that's a debate or a discussion or a set of ideas which really doesn't float your boat, then look away now. But I'm thinking about this title, the title of Benatar's book. Uh, better never to have been, or maybe better to have never been born, is it? Something like that. Better never to have been born, let's say. Which is quite a claim. And then he supports that claim by you know, going through the various arguments which have been discussed endlessly here. Particularly what he refers to as the asymmetry argument, which again we've talked about. And, um, and using you know, fairly standard rules of logic, he comes to the conclusion that it's better never to have been, but then never to have been born. And by when I say standard rule, standard kind of logic, he, he starts with certain premises, works through certain rules of inference, and comes to certain conclusions based on that, in a way which is, at least I, I think, is a, a valid use of the rules of inference and so on. So his conclusions seem to be valid. So you have to ask several things there, don't you? You have to ask, you know, other premises, other premises by which he's based this on, are they valid? Does it, and, and are they you know, descriptive enough, are they rich enough, are they full enough, those kind of questions. And I think the, the way you would arrive at that kind of question is comparing the conclusion to some kind of empirical data. Because if you were to, if you were to um, use rules of inference like that in any kind of scientific realm to make a prediction, you would want to check your prediction against the data. Do you know what I mean? Like um, this car that I'm driving in right now. If I wanted to make certain improvements to its fuel economy, maybe I should put a sun foil on like Wolves on Lot talks about. You know, I can make certain kinds of... Um, I can work with certain premises to do with how alternators work, to do with how solar panels work. I can work through the equivalent of rules of inference, which would be the, the kind of laws of thermodynamics which control how these things work. And that would lead me to certain theoretical conclusions about whether it would work or not. But I would want to test that prediction, wouldn't I? I'd want to test to make sure sun, um, sun foils did work by fixing one on a few cars and running some tests. And the same thing, I think, applies to this premise that uh, Benatar is working with, this conclusion that Benatar arrives at that it's better never to have been born. So in that case, what is the data? What is the data that you would compare that conclusion to? And I think the best data we've got is, you know, personal reports. If you go around asking people, do you wish you'd never been born? What do they say? If the rules of inference based on those premises are correct, then they should say, yes, I wish I'd never been born. But most people don't. In fact, very, very few people say that. Very few people indeed. Sorry, I should put down here to get past this lorry. Very few people say that. And in fact, that, and, and in as much as it um, refers to suffering, you know, Benatar's asymmetry refers to suffering and negative experience, to the extent that there would be a correlation between uh, you know, they should, you should expect a correlation between certain kinds of suffering and a wish that one had never been born. So, for example, if you were to ask a million people, do you wish you'd never been born? You would think there would be a correlation between those people who had, for example, compromised physiologies, you know, perhaps birth defects or congenital diseases or terrible injuries from accidents. You would think that those are the people who would, who would say, I wish I'd never been born. But there doesn't seem to be any correlation there, does there? Or you might think it would correlate with something like um, the material conditions of a person's existence, whether they were wealthy or whether they lived in poverty. But again, there doesn't seem to be any correlation there between um, a person's happiness with the fact that they're alive and awake and their material conditions. Or you might think even it's something to do with their social conditions. You know, following somebody like Marx or Althusser, who I was talking about recently. You know, if it is our social conditions which form our consciousness, then maybe there will be something to do with the social conditions uh, under which we live, which would have a deciding factor on whether we think it's 
whether, whether we think it has a harm to come into existence, whether we wish we'd never been born. But again, there doesn't seem to be any correlation there. People who live under socialist governments seem to be, for the most part, as happy to be alive and awake as those who live in capitalist governments. So I don't know what the correlation is there. The data is telling us that people do want to be born, are glad to be awake and alive, and don't wish that they hadn't been born. So if the data is saying that, then there must be something wrong with the experiment, with the theoretical underpinnings that's producing a conclusion in which people should want never to have been born. The premises must be wrong, the application of the rules of inference must be wrong, or there must be other things going on which aren't figured within that you know, actually quite limited set of proposals. Now, of course, some people might say, well, it's because of delusion. We're all deluded. We're all living in false consciousness. Or those, those individuals who say, yes, I wish I'd, I'm glad I'd been born. I'm glad I was born. You know, it might be tempting to think these people are just avoiding the truth, that the conclusion is correct following that uh, Benetarian logic. And these people are just refusing to accept that because they're living in false consciousness. But false consciousness, the, the idea that everyone is deluded apart from a few, doesn't really hold up to scrutiny, does it? The whole idea of Marxist false consciousness, for example, was pretty much roundly um, shot out of the water, wasn't it, over the last 50 or 60 years? It more than that, really. So I don't think the delusion false consciousness thing works. I think you have to start with the data. And if the data about your sunfoil is telling you that despite all your calculations it doesn't save you any fuel, or despite the calculations it does in fact save fuel, then you have to go back and look at the um, and look at the, the laws of thermodynamics and look at the design and figure out why your conclusions don't match the data. And the same with this thing too. If people are saying to you over and over again, yes I do, I, do, I am glad I was born, and that's data which seems to be in conflict with the pr predictions. So you have to stay with the data and go back and look at the premises, don't you really? Anyway, another four hours to go, maybe five actually. Probably wondering what this is here, this is my voodoo dollar. You see her?